Again, the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. I'm Mike Sempervivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com. Well, it is time, everybody, for your weekly Raw report here. So let's not waste any time. Maybe Mike will have a chance to talk in this opening segment. So it opens up with a Drew McIntyre promo, and he's talking about Edge, and Edge comes out, and the two of them jibber-jabber back and forth. Edge is upset that Drew is putting him over as opposed to attacking him. I don't know why Ed, why Drew would do that. He's a nice fella. So then they're jibber-jabbering, and out comes Sheamus, and Sheamus is upset that Edge is upset at his best friend. Drew says, Sheamus, I can handle this. And so Edge basically says, I have not decided who I will challenge yet, but when I decide, you'll know. And so Edge leaves, and Sheamus just brogue kicks Drew McIntyre, and after two months or whatever, that's the angle to build to their match. He didn't screw him in a tag match. He didn't cost him some sort of opportunity. He just brogue kicked him. And later, Drew McIntyre is in tears that this happened. Even though like a month ago, they just got in some random fight and they fought all over the building. But this time, Drew says, it's different. I do not know why it is different, but it was enough to make him cry. Then we had a Sheamus promo where he explained, I broke kicked him because I want the WWE Championship, which led to three hours of the announcers going, I don't know why he attacked him. I can't figure it out. Bobby Lashley faced Riddle for the U.S. title. They spent four minutes with introductions and and ring entrances and music, and then they're about to ring the bell. Oh, we got to go to commercial. So we sit there for six minutes waiting for this match to start. The match starts... Bobby Lashley kills Matt Riddle. He puts him in the hurt lock in the ropes. He won't break on five, so Lashley is disqualified, at which point Riddle furiously taps anyway. So he's a double geek. And then Lashley beats him up and makes him out to be an even bigger nerd when the match is over. I don't know why he didn't just submit him and end this, but hey, he did. Randy Orton does a promo backstage where he announces he's going to wrestle Edge tonight. No build, no announcement. Hey, we're going to wrestle tonight. We later find out that the stipulation is it's the last time they'll ever face each other. Out of nowhere. We have Xavier versus Ali. Xavier won with a distraction finish. Uh, finish. So it was the usual Raw match. Miz and Morrison out. They do a segment with Bad Bunny. And Bad Bunny thinks they're dorks. And then they get all agitated. So out comes Damian Priest. Damian Priest punches The Miz. They have a match. We have another distraction finish. Damian Priest beats The Miz. But hey, he debuted and he beat The Miz, who they somewhat protect. I mean, he's he's a geek, but I mean, he's a protected geek for the most part. So a big debut for Damian Priest. Hopefully he gets more than three weeks. We had Hurt Business beating the Lucha House Party. This was a good match. I enjoyed it. I liked it. I wish they would do more of this. There was no magic. And in fact, there was no distraction either. So that was good. We had a Charlotte and Asuka promo, which led to a three-way number one contenders match. Charlotte and Asuka versus Lana and Naomi versus Mandy and Dana. It was a bad match won by Lana and Naomi. So they will be challenging Shayna Baszler and Nia Jax for the tag team titles. We had Carlito and Jeff Hardy versus Elias and Riker. Remember when Jeff Hardy was teaming with Riddle? Well, now Riddle's a nerd, and Jeff has a new partner, Carlito. The match was not very good, but Carlito and Jeff Hardy won. So I don't know if Carlito's a regular now or if this was a one-shot, but he won, so there you go. Edge did a very good promo, hyping up their last match ever tonight. We had Alexa versus Nikki. We could talk about this later. I don't want to waste time. Alexa transformed into characters multiple times during the match. The announcers are now... It's just like normal that someone magically transforms into a different character. It's ridiculous. And she had a modified sister Abigail for the pin. And then Orton comes out for his match and they just pass each other. Two ships in the night. I almost said a very bad word. And then Orton versus Edge is the main event. And they have a match. And the match is fine. But then we have more magic. Alexa magically appears in the ring. Randy Orton is distracted. Have we had that finish yet on this show? 
And Edge spears him and pins Randy Orton. Bro, if I never see The Fiend or Alexa Bliss in this gimmick again, it will be too soon. I hate it. I think it sucks. It ruins the show. It's a negative. I have no evidence that anybody except for a fringe group of folks in India actually likes it. But here we are watching it every <laughs> single week on television. It is WCW at its worst programming, and they just keep doing it. That's my Raw report, Mike. Any thoughts? <laughs> well, is is Drew Gulak uh, Seamus' young boy? No, May as well be. I mean, that's, uh, he'd be moving up in the world if that were his job. There were some pros and some cons to last night's show, and you ran through all of them. You know, Damian Priest, you know, wacky match uh, with, with Miz, with Morrison and Bad Bunny getting involved. But most of that stuff went well. Damian Priest debuts, gets a big win. He he comes across like a star. Great. Bobby Lashley, I forget about how Matt Riddle looked. Look at just how Bobby Lashley looked. To me... If you want to continue on with this and make Bobby Lashley uh, Drew McIntyre's WrestleMania opponent, I think that would be great. My concern is they left a hole because he didn't tap Matt Riddle out, even though Matt Riddle tapped that he's going to lose his title before he ends up facing him. And I can see that happening at the next pay-per-view. Matt Riddle gets his victory. They claim, oh, man, look, Matt Riddle overcame Bobby Lashley, forgetting about the fact that He's looked like a geek all this time. But that version of Bobby Lashley last night, if you are going to do Roman Reigns and Edge at WrestleMania, which I think could be a great idea, I think that's a great match for Drew McIntyre. I, I think it would be fantastic. And I think Bobby Lashley and MVP are absolutely great. The Hurt Business, they didn't get heavy-handed on the deal between Cedric and Shelton. They they were more subtle about it with Shelton tagging himself in to get the victory, but they weren't so overbearing in trying to split those guys up yesterday. Uh, the match itself was really good, even though you got a team that's in the Dusty Classic that now takes an L. Uh, but still, the match itself was actually good, and you got something out of it. It's not like it's really going to help the Lucha Party long term, but you know the fact that they're not looking like geeks all the time, I think that's a nice touch. So all that stuff was was I thought good. When it comes to the magic. You know, the best excuse that the announcers have for, you know, it's hard to conceptualize what's going on right now. I don't know. Again, this is probably a bridge too far for me. Um, it's not explained well in the universe of why this stuff is taking place. I mean, at least, is it every Randy Orton and Alexa match and The Fiend? Is it a certain segment where is it only in the third hour we're going to get magic? It just... I don't know. It, uh, it's it, it sucks, is Mike. What it is, and I'm sure that just yeah, I'm get sure to the point. It sucks, love it, but I, it's not it's not wrestling for me, and a lot of it just kind of blows. Even though creatively, like I said, creatively and how it's being carried off by Alexa or Randy or uh, Wyndham Rotundo, that's a different story. Whether I want to see it on my show and if it blends in well and is entertaining, it's a different story, and I don't think it is. It sucks. Listen. I'm going to hear this, oh, well, you know, you know, there are people that like this. Hey, you know what? Let me tell you something about the world, everybody. There's people that'll like anything. Think of something really crazy or something really horrible. I mean, there's some atrocities that, in fact, there are people in this world that like. That's not an excuse to do it because you can find somebody that likes it. There's zero evidence that this is any sort of positive. I mentioned India. Well, the reality here is that these WWE YouTube numbers that people spit out is, oh, well, you know, there's three million people that watch the Alexa Bliss segment where she turned into an eight-year-old. Well, you know what? 80% of those YouTube views come from India. So that's why I brought it up. Yeah, the fans in India, there's all sorts of things that they've liked in the past, like the the Lana thing with, with uh, remember that Lana thing with Rusev? That didn't turn the company around at all, but it got a lot of YouTube views, just like the Alexa thing does. But how about we talk about Raw's down 25% year over year with no football? Back in a moment, Observer Live. If you're a big fan of these video clips here on YouTube, you're missing out on full-length shows. 
Down there on the bottom right-hand side of the screen, click that Join button, and when you sign up, you'll have full access to all of the shows that we've got up on YouTube, over 300 at current count. Wrestling Observer Live, The Brian and Vinny Show, and Figure Four Daily with Filthy Tom Lawler and Lance Storm. Hit the Join button, sign up today. You can also click Subscribe, and you'll always be alerted as to when new shows and clips are available.